Welcome this week to the Sound of Zion. Pastor Dyer Dari and bringing you greetings from Futures and Seminary Streams that are here. And this week and in the subsequent broadcast, I want to talk to you about what God wants you to have. What God wants you to have. Many at times we are so occupied with the things that God denies us that we are not conscious of the things that God wants to give to us. And the Bible says, God is the one that gives without holding back. That's what the Bible told us. So the actual uh, personality of God that should be better established in our heart is that He is a giver, not a denier, not about that denies us. But by the oppression of the wicked one, our minds have been occupied more with what God denies us than what God wants to give us. And I want you to know what God wants to give to you. What we have, and possessions play so much important roles in the life of man that many a times, you know, even if people live for 80 years in this world, it just passes like a flash. And the only thing you can use to remember them is the things they have. That's why possessions play so much important roles in the mindset of people. And that's why people do anything to have things. And so much they, they, they even deny the fact of what God wants them to have. Sometimes they put their hands on what God does not want them to have and you know, refuse to receive what God wants them to have. You know, the book Bible told us in the book of Luke chapter 12, verse 13 to 15, the, the, the power of possessions on the heart of man. Luke 12, 13 to 15, it reads, then one from the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide inheritance with me. But they said to him, Man, who has made me a judge and habitator over you? And they said to them, Take it and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of things that he possesses. So you understand that possession has a long, a powerful grip on the heart of man that Jesus had to. We heard our perception and told us that the man's life is not actually the abundance of things that he possesses. You know, in this story, we saw how two brothers were fighting over an inheritance. And this, this story still, you know, it still plays out even in the world today. How things that should be for common wealth and common interest becomes, you know, coveted by one person and refused to share with other people because they feel like if they begin to share with others, there will be a depletion of what can be accrued to them. And this makes them to lose gains of what God wants to give to them. You know, this puts us in a very precarious situation. James chapter 4, verse 1 to 3, James 4, verse 1 to 3, told us the things we do. He said, why do we have wars and fight come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your member? That's where wars come from. Wars come from pleasure, from desires, from loss. You lost and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. Verse 3 said, you ask and you do not receive because you ask and eat that you may spend it on your pleasure. So the Bible told us clearly here that the source of wars in the midst of, in the, on the face of the earth is the lust and desires of men. And the Bible says for these desires, they sometimes even murder and kill. I don't think there's anything God wants to give you that wants you taking the life of another man. In fact, there is nothing God wants to give you that wants you trampling upon another to have it. Because God is rich towards all men. Now, this brings me to a story in the back of my mind. The story is found in 1 Kings chapter 21, verse 1 to 4. 1 Kings 21, verse 1 to 4. It's a story of King Ahab and Naboth. It's a very common story. King Ahab and Naboth. The Bible told us that Ahab had a palace in Samaria. But Naboth had a vineyard just beside the palace. And you no. Know, one of the things that, that happens to the human act is that when we become covetous, we refuse to see the things that God has given to us. We begin to focus on more on the things that have not been given to us. He was already a king, he had a palace, he had everything. But the problem is he was still you know, covet, covetous of the vineyard of Naboth that was beside his palace. And he went to this man and he said, I want to, I want to have this vineyard. I want to use it for a vegetable garden. I want to turn it to something of my fancy. And that man said a statement that was very important. He said, the Lord forbid that I give you my inheritance. The truth of the matter is that there are things God does not want you to have. 
And there are things that God does not want you to have, not because God is denying you, but because God has prepared better things for you. Now, immediately we meet the walls of God and the entrances of God, and God says no to us in certain things. You know, the Bible told us of Ahab that it became solemn. It became, you know, all joy was drained out of him because of what he did not have. That he took his eyes away from what he had. He took his eyes away from the fact that it was a king that God had given ten tribes to. It was a king that God had given a palace to. And it was a king that had authority. But because of the vineyard that God will not allow him to have, he was solid. He was solid. It was so, it, 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 was, it was downcast. Don't be caught in that trap. That you cannot celebrate what God has given you because of what God will not give you. Because there are, there are things that are not yours. There are things in this world that are not yours. You will have your wife, you will now have some people's wife. You will have your car, you will now have some people's car. There are things that are not yours. But the reason why there are things that are not, some things are not yours is because some things are yours. And you have to be able to focus on what is yours and praise God for it. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 10. This is very important. I want us to read it. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. No, he who loves abundance will increase. This is also vanity. He who loves silver will not be satisfied with silver. He said, one of the things covetousness does to people is that it opens a grave in your heart. It opens a, a, a pit that cannot be filled. And it makes you an unthankful person because no matter what you receive, you are still focused about what you have not received. You are still, you are still occupied more by what you have not received than what you have received. Even love silver will not be satisfied. God wants you to be satisfied. But satisfaction does not come just because you have everything. Satisfaction comes because you appreciate what God has given to you and you can receive it with thanksgiving and joy. In the subsequent broadcast, I will still talk to us more about the things God wants us to have. But I'm focused today to tell you that things God doesn't want you to have. And it is not bad news. It's good news. There are things God doesn't want you to have because there are things God wants you to have. And I want you to focus on the things God wants you to have and be grateful for them and praise God for them. And we'll do lots of blessings. In Jesus' name. Amen.